It's good to be back in the house again. Amen? Amen. 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 I, I do have a word today. There is, like I've been saying, a lot going on. A lot going on. There's a lot of people that are discouraged. A lot of people are losing hope. How many people know that our hope is in Jesus? Amen. That is where our hope is. Our faith that God is who he says he is and he will do what he says he will do. The enemy is working overtime because there are so many people that are misusing God's gift of choice and they're choosing to do so many things that are affecting us in so many ways. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Yes. And because of that, it's bringing up feelings and emotions and a lot of people are allowing these emotions and feelings to govern their actions. And many people are not acting right. Now, even when we say many times, you know, people don't always act right, period. The good people don't always act right, much less the bad people. Those of us that are trying to line our lives up with the Word of God, we struggle to stay on that good path. Especially when these people do a bunch of foolishness. Anybody know what I'm talking about? And in these times, we have to really dig deep to stay focused on Jesus. But I want you to know that there's a reason for everything. And God knows what he's doing. I've been preaching about the sovereignty of God and God being in control regardless. You all hear me? Regardless. Man makes plans, but the Bible says the outcome what? The Lord. Is always in God's hands. And that's what the book said? Yes. You got to read the book, people. You got to read the book. The outcome is always in God's hands. And if we trust that, if we believe that, then just because the outcome may not be the way you wanted the outcome. At the end of the day, God allowed it to happen. And if he allowed it to happen, then his word to you still remains true. Are you all hearing me this morning? It doesn't change that. So don't think because it didn't happen the way you wanted it to happen that God has somehow forgotten you. <laughs> or forgotten your situation. Because the God that you and I serve in every and any situation will always give you what you need to make it through. Are you all hearing me this morning? I was talking to someone this weekend and they were very disappointed because a certain thing didn't happen. And they had great expectations for some money to come through to them. And the money didn't come through. And they were lit, upset. And it's amazing how people just get upset. And then once they get upset, this is what I'm talking about. That upsetting now causes them to act the same way. Anybody know what I'm talking about? And this person was expecting to get some money. <coughs> the person who was supposed to give them the money changed their mind. But the person who was supposed to give them the money, mind you, they, they owed this money. 
This is going to be free money. Someone just said, I'm going to do this for you at the same time. So the whole time they're waiting for this time to come to pass, they didn't make a plan for this money when they even got yet. If y'all remember, I preached the sermon, never put your faith over trust in what you ain't got. Are y'all hearing me? Celebrate what you got. But if your joy is in what you ain't get yet, then you ain't gonna have joy. You can't have joy when you ain't getting there. And then at the last minute, because you know people flip on you in a minute. <laughs> A promise is a what? Comfort to a. Y'all heard that? A fool? Ooh. <laughs> 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 Don't rest in that. Rest in the Lord. <laughs> Amen? This person changed their mind and they got upset. Upset so still they start making some bad decisions. And I had to tell them, I said, well, you know, that money was never yours. It ain't like <laughs> If you got it, it's a blessing. But the fact that you ain't get it, you can't start be making life decisions on some promise that was broken. God is your. It's who you trust. Now, the thing about it is, they were expecting, let's just say, $5,000. But they had a need for two hundred dollars, and they was waiting on this big five thousand dollars to get that two hundred dollar need met from this money. Well, listen to me now. This is how we just do. The five thousand dollars didn't come through, but someone came up to them and blessed them with four hundred dollars. How did you ever that? Because the $200 need was really a need. They couldn't celebrate that they were able to pay the $200, even though God provided that. Are you all hearing me? The need was provided for, but they were upset because the $5,000 didn't come to them. Now they paid the need. And I'm saying, but you got me. Yeah, but I was expecting more. I said, but well, that's how we are. We, we need to be thankful because in the midst of all our situations, we must see God still by standing by his word and taking care of us. That's right. Do you understand what I'm saying? He is still taking care of us. Your needs are being met. Is it difficult? Yes. But you're not out on the street. That's right. You can't even park on the side of the road because the gas is so high, you can't fall it up. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, I'm serious. Yes, you may be using more money than you wanted to use. But thank God you got the money to use. Do you hear what I'm saying? So he ain't forget you. He's still giving you what you need to endure the times that you're in. And I'm saying this because I've said many, many times, the God we serve is an intentional God. Everything he does is intentional. And everything he don't do is intentional. <laughs> and we need to remember that in difficult times. When we see him doing something, it's intentional. And when we see him doing nothing, He's doing nothing for a reason. It's intentional. It's always in his plan. We must trust his plan. Even when we don't understand. Because that is the only way we're going to have peace. Amen. Resting in the fact that God is in control. He knows why he's letting what happened happen. He knows why when you go to him and say, God, what should I do? And he says, go down this path. He said, I don't know what's down there. That's right where he wants you. 
not knowing and needing him to get through. Are y'all hearing me this morning? And I want to talk a little bit about that from the children of Israel's point of view in the book of Exodus. Because sometimes we wonder why we have to go a certain route. Why is this happening? But if you are trusting God with all your mind and all your soul and all your might, he says, he will give you direction. And a lot of times we don't feel as if the direction we're headed in is the direction we want to go in. But if you are submitting your way to God, then you need to rest in the fact that this is where he wants you to be. And don't lose sight of the fact that in the midst of the difficulties, he is still taking care of you. The enemy wants you to lose that. He just wants you to keep talking about how difficult it is and how hard this is and how hard the next thing is. And why are you talking about it? You're cooking gas in your car. Why are you talking about it? You're paying your mortgage. Why are you talking about it? You're eating. But you're going to lose sight of that. <laughs> you ain't naked. You ain't homeless. You're still doing all these things that you're talking about. It's so hard. You know why? Because your God is still taking care of you. He don't want you to think about that. He just wants you to see the big and frustrate yourself talking about that. In the midst of being taken care of. Are y'all hearing me? But there are always lessons to be learned. There are always reasons why. We have to go certain, down certain paths. I want you to turn your Bibles to Exodus. Exodus chapter 13. Turn your Bibles to Exodus chapter 13. And I'm going to read from verse 17. Exodus chapter 13, I'm starting at verse 17. It reads like this. When Pharaoh finally let the people go, God did not lead them along the main along the main road that runs through Philistine territory. And that was the shortest route to the promised land. God said, if the people are faced with a battle, they might change their minds and return to Egypt. So God led them in a roundabout way through the wilderness towards the Red Sea. Thus the Israelites left Egypt like an army ready for battle. Verse 19. Moses took the bones of Joseph with him, for Joseph had made the sons of Israel swear to do this. He said, God will certainly come to help you. When he does, you must take my bones with you from this place. Now, 20. The Israelites left Sakoth and camped at Ethan on the edge of the wilderness. 21. The Lord went ahead of them. He guided them during the day with a pillar of cloud. And he provided light at night with a pillar of fire. This allowed them to travel by day or by night. And the Lord did not remove the pillar of cloud or the pillar of fire from its place 
in front of the people. Y'all saw that? From verse 17, he says he didn't lead them on the shortest path. But he took them another route. And then that route led them to the Red Sea. Now, you all know the stories. You all saw the, you all read the versions of the story where the people complained. We might as well. Well, let's read it. It says, let's go to 14.10. As Pharaoh approached, the people of Israel looked up and panicked when they saw the Egyptians overtaking them. They cried out to the Lord, and they said to Moses, why did you bring us out here? to die in the wilderness. Weren't there enough graves for us in Egypt? What have you done to us? Why did you make us leave Egypt? Didn't we tell you this would happen while we were still in Egypt? We said, leave us alone. Let us be slaves to the Egyptians. It's better to be a slave in Egypt than a corpse in the wilderness. But Moses told the people, don't be afraid, just stand still and watch the Lord rescue you today. The Egyptians you see today will never be seen again. The Lord himself will fight for you. Just stay calm. Let's go on. Then the Lord said to Moses, why are you crying out to me? Tell the people to go get moving. Pick up your staff and raise your hand over the sea. Divide the water so the Israelites can walk through the middle of the sea on dry ground. And I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians, and they will charge in after the Israelites. My great glory will be displayed through Pharaoh and his troops, his chariots, charioteers. When, when my glory is displayed through them all, Egypt will see my glory and know that I am the Lord. Then, the angel of God who had been leading the people of Israel moved to the rear of the camp. The pillar of cloud also moved from the front and stood behind them. The clouds settled <coughs> between the Egyptians and the Israelite camps. As darkness fell, the cloud turned to fire, lighting up the night. But the Egyptians and the Israelites did not approach each other all night. Then Moses raised his hand over the sea, and the Lord opened up a path through the water with a strong east wind. The wind blew all that night, turning the seabed into dry land. So the people of Israel walked through the middle of the sea on dry ground with walls of water on each side. Y'all see what's going on there? There is always a reason that God does what He does. When Pharaoh finally let the people go, God didn't take them to the shortest shop, the route. He led them somewhere else, to the Red Sea. 
And they had to go to the Red Sea. Because the Red Sea was where he was going to do something for them. But in heading in that direction, the people start carrying on by, complaining. Oh, this is, oh, around me, oh. Sound familiar? When stuff get rough, we start, oh, how we get, Lord, what you doing? If he bring you to, he can bring you to, he got a reason. We need to just trust God, learn the lessons. Because once you submit your way to God, then anything after that is for you. Don't hear me say that over and over again. If we can trust him, trust him. If we ain't gonna trust him, then don't trust him. But if you trust him, and he say, go down this road, well then anything down that road for you. So you gotta trust him in that thing. The children of Israel was in bondage for hundreds of years. And in those hundreds of years, there was generational stuff that was going on. Mindsets. That bondage mindset. Plus their physical enemies. Pharaoh and his people. Pharaohs. Egyptian rulers. Lording over them. Thousands of them dead. Worked to death. And they cried out, help us Lord. Get us out of this situation. And while they were praying to God, they figured they wasn't hearing from God. But while they was praying to God, God was talking to Moses. Don't think because you ain't hearing from God, God ain't answering your prayer. He may not be talking to you, but he may be talking to the answer to your prayer. Are you all hearing me? And yeah, he ain't taking the shortest route. He just read that. He took them to the Red Sea. But did y'all see the part where it says, and the cloud? You know who was leading them? It said God was leading them in the cloud. And that's what the Bible said. God was leading them, taking them in the direction he wanted them to go. When you submit yourself to God, he will take you in the direction. He wants you to go. And then the Bible says, when they got to the Red Sea, with all the complaining and every day, what did it say? Then there was a shift. <laughs> what did he do? He moved from the front to where? The back. Why he moved to the back? To protect them. And all of the stuff that you're going through, when he is your protection, nothing can touch you. It said that he was fire and light. And all night, the Egyptians couldn't even see the Israeli, the, the Israelites. Couldn't even go there. Why? Because God was protecting them. I don't care how hard it gets, how hard it seems. God can do what he said he can do. And it may not be the way you want it. But there's always a reason. He protected them. After leading them, now he protect them. Then he tells the man of God, Moses, lift up your hand. Put the rod across and open up the sea. Then he provided a way. <laughs> not only did he provide a way, once they walk through, Pharaoh with his biggity self think he could do the same thing that they could do. Came behind them. But that was the plan. Because remember he says, in this my glory will be seen. 
and these enemies, you will see them no more. And as soon as they get in the middle there, what happened? See, he had to kill some things that would have been chasing them for the rest of their life. Are you all hearing me? He had to do away with it. And the way to go was through the Red Sea, so the sea could take away. Some routes, we wonder why we have to go. But there's some lessons that we have to learn. Some things that have to be dealt with. Some things, some generational things that have to be killed to stop chasing us. And sometimes the route is the way you have to go because your God is protecting you. You know, it's the same thing that happened in Joshua. Remember when the enemy was talking to God? Have you considered my servant? And he said, yeah, but you got a hand to I mean, Job, sorry. Job, not Joshua, Job. You got a hand around him. And he knows that's because he tried to get to him. We so busy worrying about the thing, we don't even realize how much he is taking care of us. When he leaving in the front, he covering our back. Amen. We should thank God for the stuff we even know He protect us from. That we didn't even have to deal with. Why? Because the pillar in the back there, blocking it. The hedge is there, blocking it. Thank God. Trust Him. These things that are happening, God got our back. Because even in the midst of these things, we're still being taken care of. Royally. I look at everybody in this room right now and ain't none of y'all look like y'all suffering. And some of y'all may think y'all suffering. <laughs> I'm serious. <laughs> Things can always be worse than it is. And we need to be a grateful people to say, thank you, God, I'm gonna get up this morning, make up my mind to come to church. There's some people, they're so depressed, they can't even get out of the bed. They think there's no hope. <coughs> we can worship. <coughs> and that's not to say things they ain't always the way we want it to be, but let's be grateful for what it is. <laughs> it's so worse. Thank Him. He is a good God in spite of, in spite of, I think of some of the Stephanie Palmer always to say to me, you the richest poor man I know. Or how you put it? Yeah, that's yeah, that, yeah. <laughs> So you the richest poor man I know. <coughs> I don't let these things get. Because I know I thank God. When you come from where I come from, I've been through what I've been through. This? Thank you. Jesus. I complain, I'll be ungrateful. Two down my throat. Pain, hospital. <laughs> I know what it is to be down. I know what it is to be out on the streets. And I'm not there anymore, and I am grateful. I don't live in Bent Creek. That would be nice. <laughs> Amen? But where I live is a palace, as far as I'm concerned. Amen? God got a roof over my head. I can pay my rent. I can pay my light bill. I can eat. I can put gas in my car. Most of all, I got health and strength to get up in the day and go to work. To make a couple of dollars. To maintain. And it's all because he's keeping his promise to me. That he will provide. He will take care of me. Do you understand what I'm saying? The route he takes us 
is intentional. I honor in me. We cry out to him. Help us, Lord. He takes us on the ground. And then we complain. See the lesson? See the lesson? Lord, Lord, help us. Then God send a man, his man, to bring him out. And then when they start going to, you bring us here to a body of water. And they right there. And in all of that, not one of them was lost. Not a single one. Are you all hearing me? And God, the Bible says, God led them there. Then turned around and protected them while they was there. Tell Moses do what he was on. Then they went through. Then that that was chasing them to make sure that don't happen no more. Destroyed. That's why they had to go that route to get that off their back. Now we still got to deal with us. Because there's some external things that chase us that God gets rid of. But the internal things, our mindset and all of that, those are the things we got to work on. You all know hear what I'm saying? Because you could be free and still not free. <laughs> and to help you out, the physical things he take away to give you some room. Now you got to do this. He say, change this. Change your mind. Am I making any sense? Don't always feel because you look at the route and it ain't the route you would take. And then you feel like God has forsaken you. I said a prayer meeting on Wednesday night. And anybody who wants to come is welcome to come to start a prayer meeting again. I said we have to be very careful. And you all always hear me say this, but I don't know if, if, if everybody gets what I'm trying to say. we got to be careful who's loudest in our ear. The reason why I said it is because people can influence you to act a certain way from the things they tell you. Do you hear what I'm saying? And I gave the example, I used the example of abortion. There's some strong feelings about abortion. Very strong feelings about abortion. And you can feel a certain way about abortion. You can hold on to God's word and say, my God don't want me to do this. And you can feel as if the people who want to uphold these laws about abortions and everything are wrong. And the way you feel about abortion is right. Then you turn on TV. And here comes this newscaster or whoever on TV, and they agree with you. And they say, the people who agree that abortion should be legal is wrong. And you say, yeah, they are wrong. Then that person go a step further. I think this should happen to those people. You all hearing me? I think they should be this. I think they should be that. Next thing you know, you hating on people you don't even know simply because they don't agree with you. And then the Bible says you're supposed to love one another. Not only that, the Bible says if you got an order against your brother before you come to me, I don't even know how people can pray. You got you harboring bitterness and everything in your heart towards people because they are of, a, are of a different opinion from you. How can you even pray? The Bible says go deal with that first. And you know why? You're being stoked, like a fire being stoked, listening to these people. Next thing you know, you feel in the same way they feel because they agree with your way of thinking. Now you better. Are you all hearing me? I talk about God's people too, you know. So angry, you start to develop bad feelings for people who disagree with you. That's not what God wants. 
we are all responsible to hold on to what God wants us to do. But be careful of those feelings and being influenced. Because people are influenced. People will influence you. Everybody ain't gonna agree. But don't let that disagreement cause you to do bad things. Are y'all hearing me? You can't expect bad things to happen to people and then go to God and pray. I wish they would take do this. I wish they would do this. Be careful. That's a thin, thin line there. People want to riot. People want to do all these things. People want to hurt people because they disagree. Be careful with that. That's a warning. And the Bible says, how can you bring your gift to me and you got all of this going on on the inside? There is a right way, a biblical way, that we should deal with offense, challenges, disagreements, people who offend you, people who did something wrong to you, all this. There's a way to do it. When you have a problem, you go to that person. If they don't want to listen, then you take somebody else. If that don't work, then you go to the church. Do we go through these channels? Or are we so busy on phone ministry? Bad mountain everybody in. <laughs> and be careful when someone will pick up the phone. You know what you know what Marvin do? Blah 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 blah. Now every time you see Marvin, you say, hmm? 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 <laughs> <laughs> Mighty Marvin ain't do nothing to you, you know. Do you all understand what I'm saying? How we can be how we can be sway to. I said someone did the same thing here this morning. I said, don't take the first thing that enters your mind, think about it. Well, you know, be careful because people can influence you. We need to stick to the word of God. We even, and, and everything must be vetted through the word of God. But if you don't know the word of God, then you don't even know when something is wrong. And we brought up the example of the counterfeit. You got to know the genuine so well that when the counterfeit turns up, you automatically know it. Because it can look good, it can, it, it can look so real, it can sound so good. Do you understand what I'm saying? But like those who watch for the counterfeit money, they don't study counterfeit, they study the real. And I've said that many, many times. You know the real so well that when the counterfeit told you, know. when these people start taking you down the wrong path, you know. Because the Bible says, bring that thought under the subjection of the real God. Are you all hearing me this morning? We have to be careful. And that television, social media, be careful. Be careful. That will have you disliking people and having hatred for people because they seem to be in agreement with you and saying all the right things. Next thing you bitter. Where's that in the wood? Now I agree. There's such a thing as righteous anger. But you even gotta know that. Amen? And you got to be careful. You have to be careful. So this is my word to you today. When the, first of all, trust God. And when you trust Him, then trust the path that He's leading you on. It may not always look and seem to be the right way, but there's always a reason. Our God is intentional. There's a reason. And anything that comes to, down that path is for you.
Are y'all hearing me? It has come to make you strong. To accomplish something in your life. To get you to a certain place. Sometimes you got to go a certain way so he can kill something that's coming behind you. Get rid of it. So at least that thing won't bother you no more. And sometimes we got to go through certain things so some stuff can die in us that we need to get rid of to move into different seasons in our lives. Because we can't carry that stuff with us. That stuff will drag us down. You in a new season, but the old you still there. Still dealing with the same old stuff in a new place, in a new season. God wants us to be refreshed, to trust Him even when we don't understand. The children of Israel didn't have to worry about pharaohs. We all have pharaohs in our lives, and they can show up in so many different ways. But he wants to kill Pharaoh, get rid of him, so at least that Pharaoh won't bother you anymore. Do you understand what I'm saying? And let me say this, family. People get wounded. People get weary. The Bible tells us, don't get weary. Hold on. When Pharaoh was coming behind, the Bible says, we just read it. God says, when Moses came to God and said, what should I do? He said, what you come to me for? Use what you got. And tell the people, keep what? Moving. See, that's the key. Don't allow what you see to stop you from moving. You got to keep moving, people. Yeah, it can look like here's this big body of water. What we can do? But trust God. He said, keep moving. Don't get weary and well do. Don't let it happen. Don't get discouraged. Let your faith and trust be in God. He will give you hope. He will give you the kind of joy that only He can give you. He will give you the peace that only He can give you in the midst of all of that. But don't stop. Keep moving. Because if He is the one who's directing you, then that's where He wants you to be. The Bible says trust with everything and don't lean on your own understanding. And if you do that, he will give you direction. But when he does, keep going in that direction. Don't start going in that direction and then look and say, that don't look too good down there. <laughs> I don't know if I will go down there. <laughs> Amen? Because family, we serve a God. We are limited. We see what? To the corner. But we see a God who sees around the corner. Are you all hearing me? We see the mountain, but we see a God who sees over the mountain. And that's who we need to trust. We don't know what's going to happen tomorrow, but we know who holds tomorrow. Amen? That's who we have to trust. We have to trust. We have to trust. Have faith, even when we don't understand. Because nothing is too hard for God. Believe me this morning. When he, when the people of Israel were let go, he didn't take them the shortest route. But he took them in a way that he wanted them. Because he had a plan. And there was some Pharaoh, there was a Pharaoh he wanted to get out of their life. We all have pharaohs. Let God deal with them his way. Amen? Amen? Let's trust him. And in these times, 
Don't just keep complaining about the fact that time is. This is your time. I don't care how old you are. You were supposed to be here in 2022. You're in no mistake. You were supposed to miss this time. You wasn't supposed to miss COVID and all the rest of these things was happening. <coughs> Putin and whoever else. Somebody was telling me now, look like China doing foolishness. <laughs> you ain't no mistake. You're supposed to be here. But if we trust God, He can give you what you need to get through this. Amen? And you too will be able to say, these enemies, I will see them no more. And in the midst of all our problems, we could dance like Miriam. Amen? Because you made it through. And let's take a look at ourselves. And, and, and thank God for today. Thank God for where you are right now. Don't let all the bad stuff make you forget that even in the midst, you are still being taken care of. Amen? Don't get to the place where your wants make you not be grateful for what you have. Amen? Amen. Put your hands together, let's give God some praise. He ain't gonna always take us the shortest route, and he ain't gonna always take us the easiest route. But I know one thing, he will take care of you. Amen?